The race is on to find a cure and a vaccine for Ebola. Here in San Diego, they're taking blood from survivors of the virus and building treatments around the antibodies they've developed. This is the surface molecule of Ebola virus, so the blue subunits are what attach to the human cell. This research led to Zmap, one of the most effective attacks. drugs used so far, but grown in tobacco and so not available in large quantities. Well, we need to understand why some people have survived, what immune response they have mounted, where on the virus or antibodies attack, and what an effective human response looks like. Enter Nancy Wrightbull, infected while helping Ebola patients in Liberia. I didn't know whether I was going to live or whether I would die, but I did have the peace and the assurance. She recovered, and her blood is now very valuable. Whether it's through just being a voice, whether it's been um, being able to give my blood for a study, I'm very grateful and pray that um, God will use that in a way that can help um, in a serum or help in, in the vaccinations. Um, or even if I am able to be a donor for um, someone. Vaccines discovered years ago and developed post 9-11 over fears of biological attack could be ready next year once they've been tested on uninfected humans for side effects. No one wants to put something that is unsafe into humans. And you know, we've learned a lot from these non-human primate studies and animal studies that we do here and have been done at other BSL-4 laboratories, but you know, there's still a jump from those studies to humans. The attention and fear prompted by America's first Ebola case at this hospital and the infection of nurses that followed has really focused people's attention here on the desperate need to stop the virus in Africa. Treatments and vaccines are a long-term hope, but it's good health protocol now that's a priority. And seeing what's happened here this week shows how hard that is, even in America. Alice Leithhead, BBC News, in Dallas, Texas.